My name is Tony Hauser. I'm a, on the product management team, and I'm here with my colleagues Gary Burgess and Stephen Boyd from the business analyst team. Uh, among other things, uh, we uh, develop and manage uh, infographics uh, across ArcGIS. Uh, before we go any further, we'd like to take a, and thank you for being here, uh, um, and hopefully uh, you won't get into a food coma, we'll be sure of that from, from lunch today. I'd like to take a quick uh, survey of the audience so we can tailor our discussion. So how many of you are familiar with Esri Infographics today? Okay, like about half. And uh, how many of you have used the Business Analyst web app to author custom infographics? Okay, just a couple. And finally, how many of you have used infographics with the JavaScript API? I know it's fairly new, but we got a few. Okay, thank you. All right, so our plan is to give you a solid overview and update on uh, Esri infographics and a sneak peek into infographics within a new and forthcoming web app builder widget. And by the end of the session, you will have all of the information you need to get started right away. Um, next slide, please. I would describe infographics as a beautiful, data-driven, interactive, and immersive type of reporting. Uh, some describe them as dashboard-like views of data and maps. Others view them as a professional and impactful way to query and communicate information, including our demographics. Next slide. Uh, it's important to note that infographics are powered by thousands of variables uh, from a variety of public and private sources, including Esri's own dedicated demographic data development team. Uh, it's ex they're um, extremely valuable data sets, and you can select them and query them through Esri Infographics. Next slide, please. And they are available for more than 130 countries, all of those, uh, much of our data. And you will have the ability to select, view, and query the data within the infographics. Uh, we have uh, out of box infographics and infographics that you can curate and customize yourself with these data sets. Next slide. <clears throat> and uh, this is my favorite slide here, and it's very important. Um, under the hood, the geo enrichment service powers and feeds infographics with all of that data. Um, one lesser known but extremely important feature of the geo enrichment service is the ability to query is the ability is is just called demographic apportionment that's essentially taking and weighting the queries by the underlying distribution of the populations under the hood for more accurate demographic estimates you don't need to worry about the details because it's built in but this is one of the strengths of the geo enrichment service and by extension the data that you query through it with Esri infographics. So this is a big deal and uh, it, it, it's meaningful. And so you can see there that we are querying these arbitrary shapes and sizes and getting really good estimates. That's actually um, Palm Springs Airport. And you can see the, the, the non-residential areas or the fringes of the residential areas are reflected in the data queries. This, these benefits here to provide more accurate demographic estimates flow into Esri infographics. Next slide. And um, to summarize, geo enrichment powers and feeds Esri infographics with very reliable query estimates from our voluminous and very valuable global <laughs> data set, um, which makes them even more valuable to you and your audience. So I'm gonna, with that, I'm gonna pass it to my colleague, Gary Burgess, who's gonna now 
proceed with the demo, and that's enough for me talking. Thank you. Great, thanks, Tony. Um, so before we dive in and 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 do a demo of how to create your own infographics or build uh, infographics into your own applications, we provide a little bit of context. Um, you know, Steve and I, Stephen, as Tony mentioned, we work on the business analyst team. So. Um, as part, I've worked in that team for over 10 years, and one of the primary things that we do in, in that extension to ArcGIS is provide demographic reports. Um, so a, a couple of years ago, we were interviewing our customers and found that many of them were basically exporting the, the tabular results for a table and, and bringing them into products like PowerPoint and, 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 and graphic tools like Adobe Illustrator and, and trying to create you know, visually compelling information. And so um, we kind of undertook um, the, the development initiative to really rethink how we would convey uh, key indicators like demographic indicators uh, within Business Analyst. And they, they were proved to be very successful, uh, so successful in fact that they're now becoming uh, very pervasive throughout the rest of the ArcGIS platform. Um, so uh, before we kind of dive into the dev as aspect of this things, I thought I'd just show you uh, how a couple of, uh, of our existing core applications in the ArcGIS platform are leveraging and using infographics. And they're using the same approach that Stephen and I are going to demonstrate uh, how to do. So the first one we've got here is, is Pro. It's right on the ribbon. There is a button here called Infographics. And what you can do with that is basically, uh, as Tony mentioned, and, and, and any one of the 137 countries where we have geo-enrichment uh, content, you can select on points, lines, and polygons and get some additional information. So what you're looking at here are uh, two boutique coffee shops in the San Francisco area. And then this uh, uh, coffee shop has a loyalty card program where they're able to basically geocode their customers. And then I've used a, 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 a GIS tool here to capture the primary market area. So these, these represent the, the two hatched areas represent the 75% the closest customers to each of the locations. So it's nice that I've got this comfort customer information. Well, how can I get as uh, um, uh, this boat boutique coffee shop, how can I get information about that particular area? Well, I can simply use the infographic tool. I'm going to select the polygon, and then it's basically going to uh, generate one of these uh, infographic templates that we've got. Um, so in, in the US, I think we've got about a dozen uh, ready-to-use starter templates that are, are quite beautiful and attractive. And like all infographics, their really primary goal here is to uh, convey key indicators in an attractive and a compelling way. And what's nice about the infographics is that not only do they uh, um, provide those kind of key indicators, so you can see here that the median age is 41.6, so that, that seems pretty uh, high for this particular area, but I can actually click on, on, on indicators within an infographic to get additional information. So now I can click on the median age and get a breakdown of, of an age pyramid that we've got here as well too. And here's information about uh, a tapestry segments. So there are all sorts of different starter templates that are, are, are available out of the box and the, the Pro, as I mentioned here, is a really good tool to use to actually just go in and explore uh, some of the ready-to-use content and ready-to-use templates that are available at your disposal. So here's one for at-risk population. So if you know I was working in an organization that maybe had to respond to some natural disasters, or something like that, this uh, particular template will provide kind of key indicators for those particular areas and give you information about people at risk. So you can get the number of households with uh, persons with disabilities, the number of households where people don't speak English, et cetera. And again, you can click on these uh, types of information explore to get more uh, particular details as well too. So uh, so that's, that's Pro. And uh, this is the um, business analyst web application. For those of you that have not used that application before, I'll quickly show you how you would go about accessing the application. If I just log into my ArcGIS online organization right here, we've got uh, the little app launcher right here. I can click on the app launcher and then I'm going to launch business analyst. And much like Pro, uh, you can use a business analyst to generate these uh, um, uh, uh, content uh, 
uh, these uh, templates for a particular area. So here you can look, this is a community center in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I've got uh, that, some of that same information as well too. But if I wanted to know, uh, you know some information about uh, some nearby restaurants in the particular area, I could click on that and get um, a, a different type of infographic that would give me information about restaurants and, and the food industry. So in this particular area, here's the community center, and here are all the nearby restaurants to the particular area and then this infographic has a second page where we've got information about the average dollar spent in this particular area for eating breakfast lunch and dinner outside of the home um, so it, it's um, a nice way uh, um, to, to work with those infographics inside the business analyst application so so let's dive into this there are a couple of things I'm going to show number one I'm going to show you at uh, 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 as a JavaScript developer, how you could uh, access the documentation and, and generate these infographics out of the box. And then the second piece of the demo I wanted to go over is to show you how you could actually build your own content into these. So all the templates that I've showed you so far are using uh, uh, ready-to-use templates from Esri's Living Atlas of demographic information, but you could also uh, build your own infographics with your own content or maybe even more compelling, you combine your content with Esri's demographic content to create this kind of co compelling uh, infographic. So uh, let's uh, dig in. So this is the developer site. So I'll quickly show you uh, how you could access information about generating infographics using the JavaScript API. So I'm just going to go to developers.arcgs.com. Hopefully you've all been there before. I'm gonna click on the JavaScript API, and then we're gonna go use the 3X version of the JavaScript API. So there are two ways to go uh, find information about infographics and, and incorporate into our own applications. If you go to the API reference, and then we're gonna to go to Esri Digit G Enrichment Report Player, and then we'll go to Report Player, this basically gives you information of how you would be essentially instantiate the infographic player and incorporate this into your own application. You scroll down a little bit, you can actually see there's a sample application that's uh, probably the best way to find information about that. Um, so uh, the other thing you can do is probably even easier is just right within the ArcGIS developer site. Uh, once you're on the, uh, the JavaScript section, you can type in info graphics in the search box and hit go and then you'll get uh, three different uh, uh, samples that are available at your disposal and this one here the report player is my personal favorite so basically you can click on that and it provides information about the the, the, the sample it's got all the sample code at your disposal that Steven's going to give you a kind of a tech walkthrough uh, but what's nice about this is it also provides a live sample as well too so we can click on that I've already actually done, gone and done that and it's uh, basically it's a little tiny sample that has some sample polygons in and around the convention center uh, uh, in San Diego where we have our user conference every year. And basically you can select one of the starter templates here for the United States. I'm going to select the executive summary with callouts. We select that particular area and basically what it goes and does is it takes that polygon, sends it to the geo-enrichment service, and then I get this lovely one-page infographic that has some of key indicators. So I've got information about the median age, and then I've got here information about our, our dominant tapestry segment as well too that we've got available here. And again, I can play with this, and they're really cool and fun, and you can interact with them. And then you can, you know, switch to a different uh, a different uh, infographic as well. Here's one available with key facts. So it's uh, pretty straightforward. And as I mentioned, uh, Stephen's next going to kind of go through in terms of the ArcGIS API, basically going through that that's that sample application that we, we just demonstrated. Uh, before we did that, I did want to kind of talk about the what an infographic is and what it resides as is the in, in the ArcGIS platform as I met as, as I've mentioned a couple of times these are available in over 130 countries um, and there are starter templates available in every country uh, some of the countries like the US where there's more rich demographic content there are 
a larger number of samples uh, to work with. But you can also create your own infographics. Uh, you can create the infographics based on Esri content or your own con uh, content. So let's, sh and you basically do that through that business analyst web application that I demonstrated how you could get to through the, the app launcher. Um, so there's uh, the, the, the restaurant one that we've created. So uh, within, think of the business analyst web application as the authoring tool for creating infographic templates. So maybe only one user in your organization would really have to use that. You could author the infographic template and then it basically gets saved as a report template item in your portal or your online, uh, or your online portal or on-premise portal. And then that report template is then used with the JavaScript API to create a um, report template. So let's kind of go over how that, that would uh, be done. So on the reports tab in the Business Analyst web app, we have uh, a button here called Build Infographics. And you can build infographics um, um, using uh, ready-to-use starter templates, the ones that I showed you before. What's nice about that is you're not starting from scratch. So for example here, uh, we could pick the key facts infographic. We'll open that up. And you know this is what it looks like out of the box, but you could replace it with some ad uh, other information. Uh, so maybe you don't want information about businesses here, so you could replace it with a chart, an image, text, another infographic, a table, you could even put a map here, or we could even put nearby locations. So lots of different content that you can work with right here. So if I wanted to, you know, rather than having businesses right here, I wanted to have information about pets in my particular area. And then um, basically there's just d different types of panels and you could add content to the panels. What's nice as well too is you can take panels and merge them together and now we could hit, and instead of adding an infographic now, I could go and add a chart and maybe I wanted to have uh, some uh, information about the household income in a particular area. So I'll we'll select the income here. I'll select some variables. So here's the different income cohorts in a particular area. I can drag and drop them right here and it automatically builds a chart for me as well too. So here's a vertical bar chart, but I can do all sorts of other types of charts like horizontal bar charts, pie charts, etc. And basically I hit apply here and then I, I, can, I can go in and save that inf infographic uh, template. And then I could use them uh, within the JavaScript API. So I'm gonna switch over to a project that I already created uh, previously. This is in another, I just wanted to demonstrate that it works outside of the United States. Uh, so this is um, in, uh, in Belgium, outside of Brussels. And this is a proposed new location for a brew pub in Belgium. And you can see here that this uh, particular brew pub location has some attributes associated with it, the building area, the site area, the number of parking spaces as well too. Um, and then I even got, uh, even have uh, some, some pictures uh, associated for the site as well too. So there's some attributes associated with this particular brew pub. As part of what I wanted to do with the, this particular area, I might wanna know what the competitive um, uh, environment is like in the particular area so I've brought in uh, through uh, Tony sh shared uh, um, a competitive layer that he had uh, at his disposal all the brew pubs in Belgium I think Tony's been to every single one of these <laughs> yeah uh, and then uh, as well too we could incorporate other types of information in this particular case I could have a feature layer uh, with uh, sales aggregated by uh, postal codes or something like that so what I've gotten done you know prior to uh, this is basically taken that type of information and combine it all together and now what I've got is I've got a uh, two-page infographic that has some of the Esri demographic data that um, so that's this purchasing power as well as the number of males females and total population it's got the image from the, the the site area the site details and then this is some market potential data that comes from a, a, a third source as well too as well and then on the second page we've got to cut that competitive envi environment so here are all the brew pubs within uh, one kilometer but I could toggle that and see that for three kilometers and you'll see now that there are 195 194 brew pubs within three kilometers of this potential location so it looks like it's quite the compelling hot spot in, uh, in, in Brussels as well too so basically 
once I design one of these templates, um, I, I can make changes. Um, and then it basically it's saved as a report template item. So uh, here, here's another example of one I've just created. This is actually going to become a, a new starter template uh, in our next release in March. Um, but basically this is a one-page infographic that provides information about health care and insurance. So it's got information about the percentage of people that have health care uh, through um, uh, d different types of insurance or they don't have insurance. Um, it, it, it's kind of a nice infographic and it could be easily customized by adding your own logo here as well too. So once I've designed uh, that a particular template, I'm just going to, within the Business Analyst web application, I'm going to go and save that and then um, it's going to get saved. And I'll just go on to my online organization right now and uh, go to my content and you'll see here, uh, it's, I created this healthcare and insurance infographic and that gets saved as a infographic report template item. And if you click on that, like any other item in the RGS uh, platform, there's an item ID associated with that and that's this ID right here. So prior to uh, and, uh, doing that demo, I, I shared that uh, ID with Steven and now he's gonna show you how you could take this item ID and build that uh, healthcare insurance infographic into a custom application. Cool, yep, all right. Okay, all right, thanks Gary. Uh, so right now what you're looking at is actually an, um, the employment overview infographic. This is a new infographic template that we're going to be releasing uh, in about two weeks um, with our upcoming 7.1 release at the end of the month. Um, I believe we're adding, what, seven new infographic templates in addition to the 12 that we already have um, for Esri. So what I've got here is I'm using the Esri uh, JavaScript API, the report player. So this is that same report player sample and doc that Gary went over. And I just want to show you really quick with one line change that I can take this employment overview infographic that we're running um, for the Palm Springs Convention Center and then replace that with that custom one, the healthcare one uh, Gary just sh um, showed. So let me switch over here. He shared the item ID that I need before the uh, session. And then let me come back to the code. Um, so I'm actually, I've got a whole sample here. I'll come back in a minute and go more detailed into what this is, but I just want to show you with one uh, line change, we can actually change, whoop, wrong one. Do, do, do. Here's my US sample. So uh, in the uh, parameters that you pass into the play report function, uh, one of them is the report ID. So we've enumerated this nicely with the Esri provided one. So we've got our at-risk population. You can read them all right here. Uh, the employment overview was the one that I had just shown. If I swap that out with the item ID that Gary provided, rerun this. And there we go with one line change that same Palm Springs Convention Center. I've got a five mile buffer around where we're at right now. It's going to run that healthcare report template that Gary shared and saved with our whole organization. All right, so let me also switch over and I'll show you Belgium as well. So I've got another sample and don't worry if you're trying to take <laughs> pictures of this code. Uh, this is all going to be on GitHub. I've already um, put these samples out there. Um, I'll put the link up after this demo. Um, so yeah, if, don't again, don't worry about if, if I'm going too fast and uh, you can't see all the code at this point. All right, so I have a sample. It's the exact same sample. The only difference is my uh, study area that I'm looking at is in actually around Brussels. It's not in the Palm Springs area. And the only two other changes are the country ID. We switched from the US to BE for Belgium. And then I've also grabbed the same item ID, or not the same ID, the item ID of that Belgium report that Gary had ran. And then if I switch over here, you're gonna see, let's refresh this. And you're gonna see that same uh, market potential uh, brewery pub uh, template that Gary created for the Belgium area. So there's that custom data market potential that got pulled in. And then if I go down to the second page, you're gonna see, if I zoom into the site, you're gonna see all the brew pub locations around that five mile buffer that I created. Great, all right. So before I jump into the code, I, want, I do want to talk about some of the export options that are available here in this infographic. 
And to do that, let me switch over back to the Palm Springs Convention Center to our employment overview. And up here in the top right, we've got this export infographic uh, button. And I will show you what the available options are. So if I click on that, I've got three options here. I can export this as a PDF, as a static uh, image, or as, as dynamic HTML. So I've already actually done that before this session, so let me open up each one of those. So the PDF is just what you would think it would be. It's a PDF of that infographic. And I just close that, okay. And then the PNG, very similar to the PDF, it's just a snapshot of it as a PNG image. And now this one is probably my favorite, or definitely my favorite. This is the dynamic HTML option. And so what this is, this is a self-contained HTML file that contains all the data of um, that infographic that you're looking at. And again, this is a static image of that infographic that you ran. So as you can see, I'm opening that up now. This is a locally downloaded file being hosted. And this is interactive, just like the uh, version in the JavaScript API in my application. So I can click on the medium net worth and I can get my breakdown into income, earned up uh, median income brackets here. Um, and then what's really nice about this is, since this is standalone, you can you know email this to somebody and they can open it up right away and have that interactive infographic. Uh, you can host it anywhere and have um, somebody look it up. A lot of our customers actually like to embed these, run them and then embed them you know, on their internal website. Um, so other people in the organization can look at them, kind of give them a nice dashboard view of um, some variables and values for particular areas that they're interested in. All right, so let's jump back now into the actual code. So I'm gonna scroll up. I hope everybody can kind of see this. Okay, I blew up my browser about as far as I want to <laughs> and to be able to still read it here. Um, so up here at the top, I'm actually using the latest JavaScript API that's not quite released yet. I think it's actually gonna be officially released in about two, two and a half weeks. Um, even though it's actually out there right now, you could still hit it and look at it. So this is the 3.28 version. And I'm gonna pull in a couple style sheets here. I need the Esri CSS style sheet and then also the Claro style sheet. And then obviously the JavaScript API that we're pulling in here. So I've just got some uh, font styling for the whole page at the top. And then there's five uh, uh, widgets. Actually, there's one widget and there's four other enumerators that we're pulling in uh, to be able to configure and run the report player. So the most import important one is this Esri dig digit geo enrichment report player. Uh, these other ones give you some options for theming, um, for specifying uh, which export options you want, that PDF, that image, that dynamic HTML. There's also some resize modes, whether you're trying to display this um, on a mobile application, we allow for a slide view or a stacked view where uh, somebody on their phone could scroll vertically through each one of those infographic panels. All right. So I've also actually added a proxy rule here. So uh, what's going on kind of behind the scenes in the report player is we're actually going out to um, ArcGIS Online. For, so in this particular instance, if you're accessing a custom template, you're gonna need access to ArcGIS.com to look that up. Um, and then we're also using Geo Enrichment as our underlying service to power those infographics. So I added a proxy here so I don't get prompted for a um, username and password every time I go to run this. You don't need this proxy. Uh, if you don't use this proxy, then the Esri JavaScript API, the identity manager, manager is gonna intercept those requests because you're gonna get back an invalid authentication and it's gonna get you that nice JavaScript API pop-up pop that prompts you for credentials. All you gotta do is enter your credentials and it'll log right in and um, display the infographic. So I'm pointing to ArcGIS Online. Again, this also works for enterprise as well. So if you've got BA Enterprise, you can actually use that as your underlying service. Um, if you've got a portal, you can point to that as well. And you've got, if you've got infographic templates, you can use the ones that your organization has created um, as well there. All right, so these uh, six values here, let me talk a little bit about how we specify that study area um, for which we're, that's the area that we're gonna run the infographic for. So these six values here are kind of passed through uh, properties that gets passed through to the template. So uh, the name, short name, description, address, latitude, and longitude. Uh, some of those Esri standard templates uh, display these um, on the infographic. So the Palm Springs Convention Center name gets displayed up here. It also gets displayed here in the report player. Um, some reports, not this particular one, also just displays the latitude and longitude of the point, so that can get passed through there. So there's six 
properties here that you can get passed through and, and you can specify those too when you're building your custom template where you want the name, short name, description, all that to display. So there's three ways to actually pass in the area that we want to run the infographic for. The first one that you see here is to actually create a buffer around a particular point. So in this case, I've got the XY location of the Palm Springs Convention Center. I've specified I want a five mile buffer around it. So that's what gets generated. And then that's the study area that the infographic is displaying the information for. Uh, the second way, which I won't go over because um, I don't have quite have enough time to get through everything, but it's in the documentation, is you can specify a standard geography ID. So if you've got, say, you want to run it for uh, Arizona, California, and Nevada, you can pass in those standard geography IDs into um, the report player, and then it will run an infographic for California, Nevada, and Arizona, and combine that all into one location that you're wanting to look at. And then the third one is the actually passing in a full-blown polygon. So you've got your own custom area that you've uh, specified somehow, and you want to pass that in and run it for a particular area. You can pass in the rings um, for that, and that's another. That's the final way you can specify the area. So once you've specified the location that you want to run your um, infographic for, the last thing to do is actually instantiate the report player and pass that in and generate the infographic. All right, so the data provider here, these are the export options that are available in the report player. So you need to instantiate an instance of the data provider GE uh, widget, and then you need to register each individual command that you want to display. So if I took out the dynamic HTML option and I reran my infographic report, you're gonna see that that dynamic HTML export option is now removed from the application. I only have the PDF and the image options. Likewise, the PDF, image, and print, if I had commented those out, all those export options were, would be removed. So you're allowed to specify what export options you want uh, your user to have in the report player. The actual instantiation of the report player widget is done right here. Um, there's several properties that you can pass in. Uh, that data provider that we just specified above is passed in uh, under the data provider property. There's a light and a dark theme um, for the actual overall report player. We're using the dark theme, but there's also a light one, which gives you a lighter header um, and a lighter background um, in, the report, in the report player. And then we also have this is slides view equals false. So if I set this to true, let me show you what that looks like really quick. So you're gonna get a nice slide view of each one of the in individual infographic panels. And that does not seem to be working right now, so I'll skip over that one. <laughs> All right, uh, there's also a resize mode. If you want to have it fit the window, um, if you want it to um, dynamically adjust, there's a couple different options here. Again, these are described in the documentation and there's samples in that JavaScript API sample uh, for that. And then this config is only necessary um, if you're actually gonna export to dynamic HTML, and that's because that dynamic HTML is all self-contained, but it still does access the JavaScript API. So we need to know which version of the JavaScript API you're referencing. So that dynamic HTML um, can be generated correctly. All right, so that instantiates the report player. Um, this places it on my uh, uh, player div down here, which is actually my whole page. And then we're actually gonna call play report and then pass in those parameters that we specified above. All right, so again, I said we enumerated all those uh, nice Esri provided infographic templates. Uh, we've got 12 currently. There's seven more coming out um, with the release at the end of the month. And so you can easily pass in um, just the string here. So if I wanna run the Skyscraper report, I can do that. But if you wanted to run your own custom template that you created um, from the Business Analyst web application, you just need to specify the item ID here. So our parameters here um, is our portal URL. So again, above I had, you saw I had that hard-coded to ArcGIS online. You need to specify the country, the two-digit country code in the US. Uh, you need to specify the report ID, and then you also need to pass in that analysis, analysis areas, which is the JSON object we had above, which was the, of the Palm Springs Convention Center. And then once I do that, all I, all I need to do is call player.playReport, pass in those parameters, and then that's what generates the infographic. All right, so when we did this session last year, one of the big questions I had um, from several users was, yeah, it's really great. Um, I've got you know 150 locations across the United States. I wanna generate those PDF files 
um, automatically. So, you know, I'm not clicking it one at a time to generate each one and downloading it. Is there any way to automate that? Um, and so I kind of have a half answer for you today. So uh, unfortunately, we don't have the endpoint um, for the server. So there's no server endpoint that you can call to generate the PDF that is on our roadmap that we're, we're working on. Um, I, I don't have a date yet for that release, but that is something on our roadmap that will be coming in the future. But in the meantime, there is a way you can automate this in JavaScript. And what that looks like here is uh, you can pass in a wait until all content is ready property, uh, set that to true when you call play report. And then what that will do is after the after the infographic has been loaded and rendered, um, you're going to get a call back from uh, the Dojo Deferred, and then we can actually execute an export command here. So say we wanted to export the PDF, we can do that automatically here. So again, after I'm calling play report, after it's been loaded, this inside function is going to get called. And what this is doing is this is uh, calling player report .execute command. It's telling it to generate the PDF automatically. I'm going to say skip saving file um, equal to true. If you want this um, to automatically download to the browser, you can set false. And what this will do is this will automatically download the PDF in your browser. Now, if you want to set this to true to actually get back the blob of the PDF for you to do something else with um, in JavaScript, that's available for you as well. So let me show you, actually, let's switch this back to image. And I'll do skip saving file equal true. And then let's run this again. And let's pull up the dev tools to show you exactly what that is going to look like. All right, so that was really quick. OK, so it has generated the uh, report player sample. And this went ahead and generated the export Sorry, it executed the export to image command, and then I'm actually getting back an array of files or properties here. Uh, one is the base64 data encoded URL. Sorry, base64 data encoded image of that um, exported P infographic. Uh, the actual data here is that it's an image PNG, the blob, and then the actual name of that infographic as well. So you could do that. Um, you could do whatever you wanted with that in your um, JavaScript API application. And then let me show you what that looks like if we change this to false. And this will actually automatically download in my browser. So this samples out on GitHub um, if you want to use it. So this only does one at a time, but you could easily, if you want to have 150 sites that you were running this for, you could easily just write a quick loop uh, to loop through each one of your locations, generate the infographic and download them. And that would be one way um, to be able to download a whole bunch of PNG or PDF or dynamic HTML uh, infographics you want for your site. So there's our image that you saw that it got automatically downloaded um, in my browser. So that samples out on GitHub. Um, and yeah, feel free to yeah, grab that and work with that and modify it if that's what you want to do uh, to generate, to auto generate all those uh, PDFs. All right, so let me switch gears now. So I want to talk a little bit. I'm excited to show you a sneak peek of um, a new widget we're looking, we're working on and we're working with a web app builder team. So before we do that, Stephen, just I, I guess a couple of points of clarification. So everything that we've shown so far from generating infographic and applications like Pro and ArcGIS Hub and the Business Analyst web app, uh, those are all available right now. Um, all of Steven's sample code will work with the existing version of the JavaScript API, that's 3.27. It'll also work with 3.28, which yeah. will be released at the, the end of March. Yeah. Um, so this is the point where we kind of like, say a pivot, now we're going to show you some cool road ahead stuff, the stuff that we'll be working on that we're hoping to release um, as sometime later this year, most likely around the user conference time frame. Yeah. Okay, and one more thing we should point out is that you don't yeah. need a business analyst license to use the JavaScript API or yeah. generate those yeah. infographics. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, that's a really good point. So, you know, the, 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 you know, you saw that with, with Pro, and I'm, I'm just... They're, they're, they're just baked into Pro. Yeah. Uh, they're in there. The only thing that you would need the Business Analyst web application is if you wanted to create your own custom infographic template, like the insurance one that I created or that Belgium uh, 
custom one with your own custom data. The business analyst web app is the kind of authoring environment for those custom templates. If you want to use it with the ready to use templates, then yeah, you just can use the JavaScript API and, and you're off and running. Cool. All right, so this is the web app builder widget. So the, um, kind of just forewarning, this is still an active development. This is my number one priority item. When I get, get back from Dev Summit, I'm trying to get this wrapped up as soon as possible to get this out. Um, there's been a lot of demand for it. Um, so I'll be able to, sh this is actually the first time we've really shown in this kind of in a public setting, um, a, sne a sneak peek to, to everybody, so. So you have to be nice. Yeah, <laughs> be nice. So it's all subject to change. Um, it's, it's working, there's some configuration options that um, I'm still working on that I'm not gonna show you yet. Um, but what I've got here is this is a web app uh, builder application. I've got two layers here on my map. Um, one is all the, it's a big coffee chain, all their locations around uh, Southern California. And then the other one is a bunch of school districts. This is a polygon layer. Uh oh, let me refresh this because this might have been open too long. There we go. All right, and then the other one is, uh oh. Oh, I think I blew up my uh, resolution too much so my pop-ups aren't looking too good. But anyways, if this is a, polygon layer of a bunch of school districts, high school districts in uh, the state of California. So, oh, I hope this looks good. No, let me actually, because I'm not showing code, let me switch back real quick. Do, 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 do. There we go, a lot better, okay. Awesome. So this is the business analyst widget. So when you first open it, you're gonna have a couple options. Um, you've got an option to search for an address or place. So you know I could type in uh, Disneyland and that would actually take me there. I could also drop a pin on the map. Uh, what I do wanna show you is actually I can select one of these locations somewhere in Palm Springs where we're at. And if you noticed uh, the widget, when I selected that point location, it automatically updated the widget to give me the option to specify a ring, a drive time, or a walk time. So now that we've got a point, if we zoom on into this area, I need to specify my study area. So let's do a five, 10, 15 minute drive time around this coffee chain location. And again, once you see, once that's been generated, the widget updated again, and now I've got two options here. I can specify what infographic I want to run. So here I can run my executive summary callouts infographic. And this again uses that same JavaScript API report player code sample I went through that's gonna be soon to be available in the web app builder. Um, and you can see it's got all the same uh, dynamic um, properties that the infographic JavaScript API report player gives it. I've got the same export options that are available. Um, and in addition to the Esri provided reports, I've also got reports that I've created that I can run. So these are ones I've authored in the business analyst web application. And then I've also got a list of shared infographics. So these are ones that have been shared um, from users in my organization. So what was that one, Gary, that you created before? We care and insurance infographic. We should probably add a alphabetical sword during the search, <laughs> a search in here, but again, I can't find it, so I'm not gonna spend time on that. All right, so that was the infographics, and then the other one is those classic reports that are provided in the business analyst web application. Again, same thing applies here, I'll just run one, but I have Esri provided uh, reports, and then I've also got reports that I've authored. You can custom uh, customize those ones as well, and then also ones that have been shared for my organization. So let's just run the quick uh, da -da -da, demographic and income profile report. And this is actually going to download a PDF of the demographic and the demographic and income profile of the five, ten, fifteen uh, minute drive time around that around that particular location in Palm Springs. All right, so let's close this. Let's zoom back out. I'll show you what it does with polygons. So with polygons, you've already got your study area specified, so you don't get the option for ring drive time, walk time. It just takes you straight into the report or infographic selection. So again, on this one, I can run, let's run the uh, tapestry profile infographic. This is one of my favorite uh, looking infographics. <laughs> 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 I 
And there you can see there's my Paris, this is the Paris Union High School District, and that's the tapestry segmentation um, infographic for there. So that's kind of short, so sweet. It's a nice, simple um, infographic that, or sorry, uh, widget we're going to bring to the business, um, or sorry, the web app builder. Um, and some of the configuration options we're looking at specifying are the ability to specify which reports uh, you want a particular user, or sorry, your that application to use. So if you only want, you know, three uh, infographics that you've created for your organization, you can specify, hey, I only want my users of the web app builder widget to run these three infographics. You're going to specify that. So those are the only options they'll see. Um, I think we're also going to specify it so this will work with both uh, ArcGIS Online and then also your own enterprise. If you've got BA Enterprise, it'll work uh, with that as well. And I think there's one or two other configurations um, options that I want to talk about, but we're, we're trying to squeeze in for the initial release um, as well. So that's, yeah, that's the early sneak peek for the Business Analyst Web App Builder widget. So the, I guess the other point is that we will be opening this up in a and oh. for a beta mm -hmm. uh, shortly and if you are interested in participating our, you can uh, uh, provide your contact information to Tony up there um, and we welcome uh, and again feedback is great because that's yeah. what drives um, the, the development the features that we'll add to this going forward and we'll continue to support this um, going forward yep yep and then I, I guess that one of the things that we haven't demonstrated is with and not well suited to do it here in this environment is that um, the infographics are responsive, so they do work on mobile devices mm -hmm. as well too. Um, so they work on you know uh, small phones. Um, you view one panel at a time, and you can uh, basically slide your finger and, and view them, and then they work well on tablets as well too. As well too. Yeah. All right, yeah, so let me throw this up there um, before we open up Q&A. &K, Q uh, the code samples on it is on a GitHub. That's github.com slash Esri slash geoenrichment dash samples. Um, and actually that complaint contains the last, I think, three years of um, geoenrichment samples that we've provided here from the Dev Summit, uh, including the one I showed today. Um, and then also links to the JavaScript sandbox sample that Gary showed, the JavaScript API documentation. You can also Google those ones and find those quite easily. Um, there's also a nice infographics Esri blog um, that kind of walks through adding this in a little more detail. Um, the business analyst web application comes with a free 21 day trial that you can sign up for uh, if you want to test, you know, building out one of these infographics and see what it looks like. Uh, and then also, yeah, there's the web app builder developer edition you can get as well. And we'll provide more information about that later when the business analyst widgets provided with it. So with that, I will open it up to Q&A. Question? So the standard campus that you provide, uh, it comes with light and dark key, but beyond that, can we change the color or yeah. anything of that sort? Uh, uh, I'm talking about the Esri standard templates yeah. without the license. So with, without the license, the answer is no. But if you do have the license, you want to show real quick? Yeah, so in that authoring environment, there's a really rich authoring environment where you could go in and change individual element colors as well too. But you can also apply like standard themes um, as well too. And you could even save your own CSS. So if your corporation or the city that you're working with has a certain color scheme, maybe green and white and blue, then you could save that. And then you could apply that to all infographics that you're working with. Yeah, you'll see there's three kind of height or three key colors there, a background, an icon, and a highlighted icon, so you can specify those to but, suit your there's needs. There's all sorts of advanced options where oh. you can go in and, and, and change individual element colors as well, too. So if you're authoring a map for, let's say, a dozen different communities out there, then based on the licensing requirement, do we need business analyst extension for all those communities? Or yeah. uh, so can it be as a consultant? Yeah. Let, let me be, this is a really important point. I'm glad you asked that again. So the, the, the ability to run an infographic, it, all you need is the JavaScript API. Yeah. Um, and anyone can run the, 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 the infographic it, it itself. There's no license re required for it at all. The, the only thing you need a license for is if you want to use the business analyst web application to author custom infographic templates to change the color schemes to add your own content then you know 
one author needs to be able to, to do that. But to, to consume that, that's just like you would access the geocoding API, their network analysis API to create a drive time service area. And so these are core um, you know, elements of the JavaScript API. All right, we've got a question over here. So um, without business analysts, can we at least change the colors through CSS in a JavaScript? API? Currently, the answer is no. It, it's, it is something that we're looking at. Um, I, I mean, this is a dev conference. I guess, yeah, yeah, you, could, yeah. You, could, you, could overwrite, yeah. you could overwrite the CSS yeah. and do it. We're not supporting it, but yeah. there's nothing preventing you from yeah. doing that. There, yeah. there, it, it, if, you, if you were to use the developer API for portal, uh, that's the, the the storage API, there are resources associated uh, uh, with that item, and one of those is CSS. So technically, you could do that, but you know it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's you know, but you know, you miss one curly bracket. <laughs> you, you gave you gave me all things. The answer things come very badly. So I'm it's not, between it's, the lines. Yeah, I got yeah. the so, oh. <laughs> you could do it, but you you would have to um, not let me know. I think is the answer. Yeah. Well, He's my boss, so I'll, right, yeah. yeah. I'll do <laughs> same page. I got you. Didn't hear anything. Yeah. So the other question is um, 3.28. That's, I guess, the next release coming out? Correct. It won't be available for four? And why? Yeah. That's a big question. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it is a big question. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's something that we're it, going to be... It, uh, it's on our roadmap. On. It's, yeah. um, I, we just don't have a firm date yet as far as, as when, when that's going to happen. But it's, yeah, it will happen. I, I just can't give you a firm date. Right at this point, so. Because if you migrate the 4.0 or 4.x, uh, what's these features you have to find a way to right. make it work? Yeah, you, you, if you, if your primary application was in 4x, yeah, you'd have to find a way to still pull in the 3x version to to get the report player at this time. Okay, we got a question back here from Derek. Uh, is there credit usage involved in this scenario here? And if so, uh, would you like to speak to? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. So there 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 is credit usage associated with, with the infographic. If you're using uh, some of the Esri demographic content, they um, th that that's covered in the documentation. To view them, it's it's quite inexpensive. I think it's a thousandth of a credit to view them. Yeah. To 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 view them, there's additional credits associated with exporting to PDF and HTML. And that's because much of the data that we have comes from third-party resources that are royalty-bearing. That are licensed when, yeah, when licensed, it, yeah. the data leaves. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's that's why, and that you know, through the JavaScript API, you can certainly lock that down if that's not something that you wanted to expose. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And then, and then the other point is, if you create an infographic with only your content. No Esri content, then there's no there's no credit usage associated to that. It's only if you're consuming um, the the demographic content. Can Good. I add to that though quickly? There is in the Living Atlas there is like non premium data that is very rich. Um, very rich. You'd be able to find like I'll just use that. <laughs> there's there's layers within there that you'd be able to obtain that you would likely find interesting. So. Um, although that is true for like demographics or tapestry, uh, there is a number of free quality data sources out there that I encourage you to try out. Okay, we got a question from Leon over here. Yeah. Is it possible to start with RTS Online to create an infographic or can you export from RTS Pro into RTS Online? And not, not, not currently. The, the only way to create a custom infographic right now is through the the business analyst web application that really is the authoring environment uh, uh, for infographics is you know it's, it's it's such a rich building environment to to move that to another application would be an immense undertaking so you'd basically be putting business analyst web application in ArcGIS online so um, oh, one more quick thing before we take the next question we are so we do have a um, booth over under the apps RTS app section. Yeah. So we'll be there if you've got further questions on this yeah. today, tomorrow, and the rest of the week. Okay. We got Back over here. at the table. So the, um, I lost it that fast. It was the data. So everything you did was really quick and clean. It, 
it made it feel like the dashboard itself, the report, was already hooked to the data sources. You've got education, um, housing, everything else. Is that not true? Yeah, it, it, it's, I, 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 it's to use the Esri provided data, the data that's in the Living Atlas is really easy. So, you know, for example, when I, uh, I'm showing you, right? Yeah. So, you know, if I wanted to replace this with a chart and I wanted to use, um, you know, this is the, 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 the standard data that Esri provided data. So if I wanted data on education, um, and educational obtainment, I could, you know, s select the different types of educational obtainment and then create um, a, a, a chart with that and then, you know, change the different chart types. So that, that, works, that works really well and it's very seamless. Um, if you look right here on the, the categories, there is another panel here called My Data. And this is where you could bring in feature layers that have your own content. So in, in this particular case, I have um, uh, maybe it's best if I actually sh show you it on a map. Um, so here's this area in Albuquerque, New Mexico, um, and I I've uh, created a, uh, I have a hosted feature layer that has uh, some juvenile um, crime statistics that are aggregated and made publicly, uh, not juvenile, um, uh, arrest are and crime data that's made publicly available available by the Albuquerque Police Force. So if I go and, and browse that data, this is the kind of the my data and I could look at the number of arrests for this particular area and now it's going to generate that. So that's just like a you know a, it's just a hosted feature layer and I could add this um, through um, just adding a web map or navigating to my portal and, 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 and seeing that. So, you know, I could go within the Business Analyst web application, I could go and add data from web maps and layers, and then up, I've got my content, my organization, just like you would through the rest of ArcGIS. So you can see now that I've, you know, added this layer and I look at the attributes, I've added a feature layer that has, oops, no, this particular area right here. And um, yeah, so it's it's got you know the number of rest particular areas well too. So now if I go back to that building infographic um, uh, particular area, and now if I wanted to create a chart with the arrest data, I could go to the chart, and then rather than using the standard data, I've got this feature layer that's got the New Mexico crime data, and now I could you know create a chart that with the number of um, uh, and people on probation, the number of violations, the number of arrests. So it, it kind of works the same way, but you have to add the data to your map it, it, itself. Um, you talked about uh, demographic and income profile. You, you quickly kind of showed that. How different that is from a regular infographic? So is it the same thing? Or yeah. is it a different it, way to yeah, obtain it, that data? Yeah, so that, that's a good question. So the question is, is you know, how different is the, one of those classic reports? You know, th those reports are the ones that I talked about that we've been providing for years within Business Analysts. They're just tabular information. Um, so basically the underlying service of aggregating the data using the apportionment methodology that Tony explained at the beginning is the exact same. It's just how we present that information. So you could convey that as a PDF uh, with tables and lots of information, or you could take that same information and convey it in the infographic player using those kind of uh, visually engaging uh, uh, graphics. So it, it's the same underlying data and content. It's just uh, displayed a different way. All right, any more questions? Cool. All right, uh, please visit us, as Stephen said, at the, uh, the expo. We're at the uh, Business Science Web App booth. We'll be able to show you the infographics and all the stuff. And please complete the, complete the mobile surveys. We actually do read this stuff, and uh, we really appreciate your feedback. And then it, uh, also, if, if anyone's interested in participating in the beta for the Web App Builder widget for infographics, you know, please come see one of us. And... and um Something of a shameless plug for myself, but actually I, I was asked to do this by leadership. I just published today 12 template infographics that you can all get access to. So if you search on LinkedIn or Twitter, 
for um, Infographics Esri Dev Summit. There's a link and you can download another 12 additional starter kits to run with it. Yeah, so, so this, this is, uh, Helen is, uh, is the, the Yoda of uh, uh, Infographics at, at Esri. She's uh, created some really stunning and visual uh, infographics and some of the starter templates, the tapestry one, for example, that she's got. So one of the things I didn't show is in the Business Analyst web app, you, you can you know share with others in your organization. So if I create a, a template, I could share it with Stephen. You can also download them as a file, and then you could uh, upload them, and that's what Helen's indicating there as well too. So it's a nice way to kind of collaborate when you're not within the same organization. All right, thank you very much for your time.